Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture number 17. In this lecture, we are going to talk about some of the properties of the uh, LTI system. You understand LTI systems are completely characterized by the impulse response. So in this lecture, we are going to uh, talk about the uh, invertibility property causality property, property, stability, and the step response, right? Step response is a new one, whereas the rest of the properties we have uh, also discussed while we were talking about the uh, systems classification or systems properties. So you understand that we talk about it in general, but now uh, here we will just take the impulse response because we say that impulse response for LTI system completely characterizes its behavior. So we start with the invertibility. We talk about some of uh, maybe few numericals. In fact, uh, we will uh, do numerical problems on many uh, of these properties. So this lecture is about the properties. So hopefully we will complete all the properties of the LTI system here and from the next lecture we'll start the new topic. In this part of the course we are talking about the properties of the LTI systems and we say that uh, the impulse response of an LTI, LTI system completely characterizes it. So let's have another example. We have a system uh, which has impulse response equal to U of N and we have to tell whether this system is invertible or non-invertible. So before uh, finding out whether the system is uh, invertible or non-invertible, let's talk about the uh, accumulator or summer. So an accumulator or summer uh, system is defined as the one which has the output current value of the output, which is uh, equal to the uh, running sum of all the values of the input up to the present value of the uh, input. So this, this equation describes the uh, summer or the uh, accumulator system. So if I expand this equation, I can write that y of n equals to So we can write, right? Uh, 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 so y of n equals to summation k running from uh, minus n infinity up to n and x of k. So this is equal to uh, if I sum f, right? So, so let me write it here. So by putting values uh, here, we have h of n convolved with h inverse of n. So h inverse of n, you understand, equals to impulse of n minus impulse of n minus 1. So uh, we will use the distributive property. So u of n convolved with impulse of n because u of n is the value of impulse response of the accumulator system and h inverse of n is the impulse response of the inverse system. So u of n convolved with h uh, convolved with impulse of n minus u of n convolved with impulse of n minus 1. And you understand uh, convolution of any signal with impulse is the same signal. You understand convolution, uh, the identity of convolution is the impulse. So if the impulse is shifted by some amount of n naught, for example, we talk about discrete time, similar arguments apply to the continuous time system. So for example, uh, we have, uh, so if we convolve any signal with the impulse, then we get the same signal, right? 
So important is called the convolutions identity, similar to the identity of addition, which is zero. So if you add anything with zero, you uh, zero, you get the same thing. If you multiply anything with one, you get the same thing because one is the multiplicative identity or multiplications identity. So similarly, the impulse is the identity of the convolution. So if I uh, convolve any signal with impulse, I get the same signal. If the signal, uh, the impulse is shifted by amount of n naught, so the signal will be shifted by amount of n naught, right? Similarly, if the input, if the uh, impulse is uh, scaled by a factor of l, so the resulting signal will also be scaled by a factor of l. So anyway, let's continue here again. So we convolve step with the impulse, so I get the step. Okay, again. Uh, I convolve step with the shifted impulse, right? One unit shifted impulse, so the resulting uh, signal will be the uh, one unit shifted step. So if you look at this one, this is basically the first difference of the step, and the first difference of step basically equals to n. So hence, it is proved that the uh, the two systems have impulse responses which are inverse. So if the impulse responses of the two systems are inverse, their convolution will result into impulse, right? So the first system, which is uh, shown here again, that is uh, a system having step, uh, resp uh, having response equal to step, and this is equal to the uh, system called the summer R uh, accumulator. And we have proved this by assuming that we have any generalized signal x of n. So if I convolve this with x of n, the resulting uh, system will have the expression that is equal to this one. So that indicates this is basically a summer R accumulator. Now the inverse of summer R accumul accumulator is basically uh, a system whose response is equal to the difference of the current value minus the previous values so which I've shown you in the previous slide so this is how we can uh, find the inverse of the uh, accumulator system so another property we're going to consider is the causality and uh, while doing in general uh, the system properties not the LTI so you understand for a system to be causal the present value of the output cannot depend on the future value of the input so in terms of cause uh, impulse response we can say that H of n represents a system uh, a causal system response uh, when uh, n is not less than zero that means the response is zero for its argument is less than zero so we can write the uh, expression for the discrete time convolution sum again here so you understand y of n equals to summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity x of k h of n minus k and this also can be written as summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity h of k x of n minus k and this is the uh, commutative property so you can convolve x of n with uh, impulse response h of n or you can convert impulse response h of n when uh, with x of n so they both result in the same output so um, that that is the uh, commutative property right so now uh, we can write it like this and we understand that for the case of uh, positive values of the k the present positive values of the k if we look at the input signal x of n so positive values of the k indicates the uh, past or the present value of the input signal right so when uh, k is 0 that shows the present value when k is 1 it shows the uh, recent past and so on right whereas if we take the negative values of the k negative values of the k will result into the 
future value of the input right so for a system to be causal k cannot have negative values so when k cannot have negative values we can reduce the expression previously it is from minus infinity right up to infinity but now for a causality condition we can write that k cannot have negative value so we can say that k starts from zero so k when k starts from zero so this is the expression for the uh, case of the causal system for causal system we have the summation k running from zero up to uh, infinity So similar uh, argument applies to the continuous time case also and we say if the system is if the continuous time system is causal then h of t will be equal to zero, then its response will be zero when the argument is uh, negative so in this case t so when t is negative the response must be zero if this is not the case then we say the system is non-causal and we can also write it like the one we did for the discrete time case and we say y of t equals to integration rights from zero up to uh, infinity h of tau x of t minus tau so this is the case for the uh, causal system so the next property is uh, the stability right so you have done this property for general systems now this time we are going to consider it uh, for the LTI system case you understand that uh, for the case of LTI we say that uh, impulse response gives complete characterization of LTI system so let's see what will be the impulse response for the stable LTI system now we know that uh, uh, if we are given the uh, that the system is uh, linear and time invariant so for the case of discrete time the output equals to convolution of uh, x of n with h of n right or h of n and x of n so you understand because it holds the property of uh, commutative right so that's why it's uh, same whether you take you convolve response with the input signal or you convolve the input signal with the uh, impulse response you get the same output so this is the expression now to find the stability like there we defined that for the bounded case right the first condition was that input must be bounded right so if the input is bounded then we check whether the output is bounded if the output is bounded then we say the system is stable if the output is not bounded then we say the output is uh, then the system is not bibo stable right for the bibo stability we say that bounded input must produce bounded output so if this is the case then we say the system is stable now see uh, let's see here so this is the output now if we take the absolute or the magnitude value of the both sides so we can take y of n absolute this is equal to absolute of the product of the two right and you understand because the h of n convolved with x of n this is equal to summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity h of k x of k x of n minus k the absolute value right or if I take the absolute value here then that means it can be that uh, y of n can be less than or equal to this I think this thing we have discussed while talking about the uh, system properties right so you understand this then uh, we can take the absolute sign on the individual right here we we take the absolute sign of the product that is h of k uh, times x of n minus k whole absolute so we can also write it absolute on the individual uh, that will be something uh, absolute value of h of k times the absolute value of the x of n minus k right so let's say the 
uh, input is bounded when input is bounded we can represent it by m of x and we assume that m of x is basically uh, less than infinity or it is bounded so we can say m of uh, x is basically right the absolute value of m of x is less than infinity right so that means it is bounded now this is bounded so we have the now it reduced to this uh, uh, expression okay so we say summation k running from uh, minus infinity up to infinity h of k uh, absolute okay so that means because uh, m of x is bounded right so that means the whole expression depends on the absolute value of the response so that means if k running from minus infinity up to infinity h of k absolute if this thing is uh, bounded then the output will be bounded so when the output is bounded that means the system is stable so for the case of the uh, LTI system we just take the summation right for the absolute value of the uh, impulse response so that means summing k running from minus infinity up to infinity absolute of h of k if this results into some finite value that means the system is stable if this results into infinite value then that means the system is uh, unstable right so similar uh, arguments apply to the continuous time case also so this is the expression for the case of the discrete time system and this is the expression for the case of the continuous time system i hope you understand that in case of continuous time we take the uh, integration whereas in case of discrete time we take the summation so for the continuous time we say that t running from minus infinity up to infinity if the integ integration of h of tau uh, with the inter uh, with the limits of minus infinity up to infinity if this results into uh, some finite value then we call such a system as stable lti system but if it results into some infinite value then we call such a system as unstable system so let's take an example uh, on uh, the discrete time system and see whether the given system is uh, by both stable causal and memory less so the impulse response is given here and we based on this impulse response we understand uh, we can characterize the uh, whole lti system right so let's first check whether the given system is memory less or uh, uh, not memory less in fact stable or unstable right so let's put the equation for the stability so we, as we have uh, defined that summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity h of k the absolute value of h of k it must be uh, less than infinity it must have some finite value now if this has uh, for this particular case if this has the uh, some finite value then we'll call it a stable otherwise it will be unstable system right so here we have we are using variable n so i've just replaced it by, with k right we can also use the same but because in definition we on the previous slide i have written that summation k running i mean i put the uh, i use the variable k so i am also replacing it here with a k so that uh, there should be no confusion okay so i've just wrote the equation and then i put the values here and uh, you know this is the step function you understand about the step function that it is equal to one only when its argument is equal to or greater than uh, zero so this holds for those values of k where k is equal to or greater than 
minus 2 when k is for example minus 3 in that case the argument will become negative and this whole this step uh, this will result into 0 so multiplying anything will uh, anything with 0 will result into 0 so that means k cannot have values less than minus 2 so that means we can write it like summation k running from not minus infinity but from minus 2 up to infinity and uh, because this is equal to 1 so no need to write this we'll just use uh, just write a power k absolute value right now uh, now expanding this I can write like a power minus 2 absolute value right so you understand absolute value means that whether it is negative or positive will take only the positive value so a power minus 1 absolute value okay and then we can write that summation k running from uh, 0 up to uh, infinity and this will be a absolute power k okay so by looking at this one you can easily guess that if a absolute right if a absolute is less than 1 and it is greater than 0 that means if it's absolute value whether negative or positive between 0 and 1 means for example it is whether it's a plus 0.5 or minus 0.5 or maybe 0.9 right plus 0.9 or minus 0.9 and so on so you understand what does this uh, expression means right so if you understand you understand if absolute value is between 0 and uh, 1 that means this will be uh, uh, decaying one right so the geometric series is a geometric series and it will be uh, decaying so that means it will converge right when k tends to infinity it will converge but if if it is the other case in that case meaning to say that absolute of a is greater than one in that case it will diverge and when it diverge it will result into uh, infinity right so this will be uh, less than infinity if this condition is whole so that means we can say this system will be stable only if absolute value of a is between 0 and 1 if this condition is violated this signal will be uh, this system will be uh, unstable then the second question is whether the given system is causal or non-causal so we say that impulse response characterizes the LTI system so the impulse response for the causal system is h of n or maybe I write it in terms of k because I have mentioned here k so let's write it in terms of k I hope you understand this both are same so h of k equals to 0 where for k is less than zero if k is less than zero h of k should be zero if this is the case then we say the given system is uh, causal so because uh, h of k is non-zero right h of k is non-zero you can see here that h of k is non-zero for k is negative so that means this system is not a causal so it's a this this system is an example of non-causal system the third thing is about the memory is this given system memory less or it has memory so to check this we know in terms of impulse uh, for the LTI system the impulse response completely characterizes the uh, uh, behavior of the LTI system so that means let's see if h of k is equal to 0 for k is not equal to 0 right if this is equal to 0 when k 
is not equal to 0 right so this is the condition for a system to be uh, memory less that is h of k its impulse response should be 0 when k is not equal to 0 so is it the case here now we see for k is negative it has some these values so that means this system is an example of a system with memory because for a memory less system h of k must be 0 when k is not equal to 0 so I hope that gives you some understanding so here we are given a uh, a system that is basically pure time shift okay so a system has impulse response or something impulse of n minus n naught and we have to tell whether the system is uh, stable or unstable so it's very simple that you sum it from minus infinity up to infinity and we can see the summation will result into one so this system is basically an example of the uh, stable system similarly the time shift case the pure time shift case for this uh, system which is continuous in time so if you sum the uh, response from minus infinity up to infinity uh, not here for the continuous time case we'll say that if we integrate right so from minus infinity up to infinity it will result into one which is a finite value so the given system is um, stable right but for the case like accumulator system uh, we understand that uh, and running from minus infinity up to infinity u of n it will result into infinite uh, infinity right so that is the example of the uh, unstable system similarly for the continuous time case suppose we have a system which has a response of step right so uh, if the response equals to step and if you sum it, if we integrate it from minus infinity up to infinity it will result into infinity right which is again example of the uh, not stable case right unstable case so you can easily observe from here because step function is one when its argument is equal to or greater than zero so that means the lower limit which is originally from minus infinity up to infinity will now be from zero up to infinity because from minus infinity up to zero this signal will be zero right so its integration will result into zero so now it will have some uh, value and because it's one so integration of this will result into tau and by putting the value right i hope you understand that uh, this is for example zero up to infinity this one is d tau so if i integrate it i'll get a uh, tau and the limits of integration are zero up to infinity so by putting infinity minus zero will be infinity so thus the accumulator system also called the summer is an example of the not stable or unstable system then the uh, next property is the step response the step response of a system is defined as the output of the system when the input is step similar to what we have for the uh, for the impulse response that we define it the output of the system when the input is impulse so uh, uh, for the case of step response we say the output of the system when input is step so step response is represented by s of n for the continuous time for the discrete time case and s of t for the uh, discrete time uh, for the continuous time case s of t for continuous time case and s of s of n for the discrete time case so uh, we can say that uh, if i expand this one i will write 
So we can write it that summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity h of k u of n minus k. So you understand for the case of step it is must that its argument must be equal to or greater than zero. If its argument is less than zero in that case the step the value of the step will be zero. So this will result into zero. So when n minus k is greater than zero this will be equal to one. So we can simplify it to so uh, because uh, in this case k cannot be greater than uh, n. So the upper limit of the k will be n because in case it's greater than n then this will have negative negative uh, argument and it will be zero. Right. So the step function in terms of impulse function can be written as step function equals to summation k running from minus infinity up to n h of k if we sum we it will result into step uh, response right so similarly for the continuous time case we say that step response is basically the integral of h of tau from minus infinity up to t Right. So similarly, impulse response in terms of step response can be written as the first difference of the step response. Similar to if you recall that we said the impulse response, uh, not impulse response, impulse is basically equal to the first difference of the step function that is u of n minus u of n minus 1. So, uh, similarly, in the continuous time case, we say that step function, uh, the uh, impulse response is basically the derivative of the impulse response is the derivative of the step response, right? So this is the step uh, impulse response which is equal to the first derivative of the step response. Similarly, we define the step, right? If you recall that we defined the uh, continuous time impulse as the first derivative of the step function, right? Uh, u of t maybe I just use the prime to indicate it is the derivative okay similarly the uh, step function was defined as the summation uh, m running from minus infinity up to n Right, that is uh, step function. Uh, step function or unit step is in term of the impulse was summation k. Uh, for example, m running from minus infinity. Whatever variable you like, you can take. So m running from minus infinity up to n, and it was impulse of m so this is how you represent step function in terms of impulse so let's consider another example we have a impulse response given as this one and we have to find the step response so to find the step response, we understand that a step response basically equals to uh, S of t, we denote it by S of t and S of t equals to for the continuous time case, we say integration minus infinity up to the current value t 
and h of tau uh, d tau right let's see so this is basically tau right tau and this is also tau d tau right so you understand that uh, 1 by rc is just the scaling factor so i can take it out so i am left with uh, integration right you also know that th this is a step signal or step function and it is one when its argument is zero or greater than zero so that means this this will be one only when the uh, lower limit is zero not minus infinity okay so this upper limit is again t and we are just left with this thing e e power minus tau over rc and d tau so by taking integration we find so this is the integration and these are the limits of integration so if i replace t uh, tau minus tau with t i'll get 1 by rc right e power uh, minus t by rc okay and divided by minus 1 over rc right so i think we can cancel the two or cannot cancel okay okay so this minus 1 by rc and minus e power 0 okay so i think you know that we can cancel them anyway so you get uh, e power 0 is basically 1 so because minus 1 is divided here so that means this minus and this minus will become plus so you have plus 1 here and this minus again divided here so it will become minus 1 so that means i'll get something like 1 minus e power minus t over rc okay so that's what you get and that's what is called the step response okay so this exists for you understand for the t values that are positive that means this expression is valid for the t is equal to or greater than zero so for t is less than zero this is not valid so that means i can write it in a compact form using the step function so that means the step function equals to zero when t is equal to or less than zero you understand when t equals to zero right uh, in this case this will become zero again so that's why it's mentioned here that uh, uh, step response is zero for t is equal to or less than zero and it has value of this when t is greater than uh, zero let's have another example i will just give you some uh, hint and i suppose you can do it by yourself right so what is the step response when the impulse response is given by this expression so you understand how we can solve the uh, the case for the step response right and uh, we are also given that uh, a is basically a absolute is less than one right so to find the step response that's quite straightforward that 
I just write the equation and I think you can do it by yourself. So step response denoted by S of N basically equals to summation K running from minus infinity up to uh, infinity or T N. Okay, good. N. And this is your minus A power k u of k right so i think you can do it i just give you the answer this is the answer and it's quite straightforward you understand the we have step function multiplied here so that means it the lower it will write so it's because for negative values of k it will be zero it will be one only for the k equal to or greater than zero so in that case you understand the lower limit will be from 0 not from uh, minus infinity so with this we end the lecture for today and the next lecture we are going to talk about the uh, some of the numerical problems on uh, the topics we have covered so far that is the LTI system mainly some problems with uh, convolution sum and some on conv conv convolution integral I'll be solving and maybe few problems on the properties of the LTI system so I hope you understand uh, that uh, the LTI system are completely characterized by the impulse response so if we know the impulse response we can tell whether the system is memory less or it is memory or whether it's the stable or unstable system whether it is a causal or non-causal system whether it's invertible or non-invertible and so on right so the uh, uh, impulse response completely characterize the LTI system whether discrete or the continuous so that's all for today see you in the live session where we'll be having question and answer so if you have any question uh, you can ask there and i want you all of you to go through the slides right the lecture and try to develop uh, your concepts that's all for today allah Hafiz.